Hello everybody and welcome back. And in the previous video we actually tested out our reverse shell in order to see if all of the current functions and all of the current uh, current uh, responsibilities of our reverse shell work uh, on our Windows 10 machine. So we managed to compile it successfully with our pyinstaller.exe on our Kali Linux and we ran it on our Windows 10 machine. Now there are a few things that you might have noticed that actually didn't work. For example, let me just go to my to my uh, directory with the reverse shell and let me enlarge this a little bit so we will zoom in. And if I nano the reverse shell, you will see that we didn't code anywhere. Uh, for example, that the reverse shell should try to connect back to us every 30 seconds, for example. So let's say we were a little bit late on with our um, listener. So we didn't set up listener on time and let's say target click the the virus or our reversal or backdoor or however you want to call it before we actually set up a listener. That would make us not be able to connect to them or them to connect to us since we didn't listen on our local host on our local port. So we want to actually change that. We do not want the target to actually uh, run the code and run our backdoor and for them to not co to connect back to our server just because we didn't set up a listener. So let's add a function right here. We'll put it right here. So let's add a little bit of space and let's call it connection. The function will not take uh, will not take any argument. So just type here the connection and uh, empty brackets. And what we want to do right now uh, is basically try to perform the connection every 20 or 30 seconds or for example however long uh, you want to be or for example at any period of time you want to make it. So first of all let us go to the part where we actually perform the connection for now on which is this part right here. So the first thing that our code does is basically it uh, sets up a socket with the IPv4 and TCP and then it performs the connection. After it performs the connection it prints connection established to server. Now first thing we want to do is we want to delete the connection established to server since we are running this on a target and there really shouldn't be anything to be printed out on the target system. So let's delete this print connection to server and if you notice right here, right after we connect, we go into our shell function, which is a while true loop, which basically performs actions forever until we specify Q and then we actually break out of the while loop and break out of our program. So we can actually try to make something similar for our connection, just without the breaking part. So what we want to do is basically as soon as the target cl double clicks our code, we want to make it uh, try to connect to our server every 30 seconds, for example. So what we want to do is this function right here, which is sog.connect, we want to paste it in our connection function. So we want to delete this. And basically what we want to do right here is add the tab button. And then, so we added a tab button so it actually belongs to the connection function. And then we want to type while true which means the same as in the shell function where that this will perform forever. And while true, we want to actually uh, use a try and accept rule. So we will just type here try and accept. And in the try, we will try to perform the connection. So sock.connect. We want to connect to the our IP address, which I need to check out what it is. So let me just open up another terminal and let me just type here I have config and we can see my IP address is .1.9. Good. So we will try to perform the connection on our 192.168.1.9, which is our Cal Linux machine. We need to put this under the double quotes and we need to specify a port, the same port from our server as well, the same port that we're listening on. So 54321. We close the double brackets and that's, this is basically it for the connection we want to type in the try and accept rule. And after that, for the accept, what we want to do is we basically want to call our connection function uh, inside the connection function. Now, I will explain what this means. Basically, if I just type here 
connection, this will mean that the function where once someone uh, once the function is called down here, it will go through this code, it will go to the while true loop, it will try to connect, and if it can't connect, it will call itself. Then it will go back to the connection, it will try to connect, then it will go back, it will try to connect, and it will perform the connection function as, uh, forever until we are able to connect back to our server. So, what we want to do is not actually perform this right away, we want to add a timeout for the connection function, so we will just import a library called time. So just type here import time, and time allows us to basically pause our program or put our program to sleep for a certain amount of time. In our case we will specify that time to be for example 20 seconds. So let's go to our connection. After the while true loop, we want to type here, before the try and accept, let's type here time dot sleep, which is basically referring to this library, and dot sleep is just sleep is a function that is uh, specified in the time library. And all we have to do is specify in the open brackets the time that we want to put our program to sleep. If you just specify like this 20, this will mean our program or our backdoor will sleep for 20 seconds and then it will perform the next step of the program. So, uh, one more thing we want to do is what happens if we manage to connect. So, if this manages to connect, we want to perform the shell function. So, we want to enter our shell. And this means two things. One of them is that we want to delete the shell function right here. And we want to specify instead of the shell function, connection function. So, uh, I believe this should be it. Uh, I believe this will work. So, let's see what actually will happen. So, we create our socket. We perform, we call the connection function, which will go to this code right here. It will enter the while true loop. It will sleep for 20 seconds. Then it will try to connect to our server. Uh, if it manages to connect, it will call the shell function, which will enter us in our uh, command execution part, which is right here. If it doesn't connect, it will call the function again, and it will go back to the beginning. And it will again sleep 20 seconds, try to connect. If it can connect uh, at that time as well, it will call the function again. So this will perform forever until the target manages to connect back to our server. So we want to save this, so control O. I believe this will work. We will test it out right now. So everything is good. We call the connection function and we call the shell function from the connection function. Okay, so say once again, control X to exit. And now let us actually try to compile this and see if this works. So what we will do is we will first compile it, then we will actually uh, run our reverse shell first instead of the listener, and then after, for example, 20 to 30 seconds, we will run our listener to see if this works. So let's see what, uh, let's first compile the program. So what we want to do is type here wine slash root, now we perform the same compilation as in the previous video. So drive C, Python 27, and then what we want to use is the scripts library and pyinstaller.exe. After that we want to specify the name of our file, which is reverse shell.py, and we want to also specify it to be one file and without console. We do that with these two commands, which is dash dash one file and dash dash no console. Then we press enter and let this compile. This will perform the compilation with our pie installer and then we will be able to transfer it to our target with our USB drive or however you want it. So I will just plug in my USB drive. And right now what I will do is first of all I will put it to be on our virtual machine, so King Data Traveler. Now when it is plugged in, I will copy the file to our USB drive. So first of all, we go to the disk directory as in the previous video, we list, and we move the reverse shell.exe to media root and then my Kali live USB drive. 
once we move it, I can now eject the USB drive right here. And I can call my function from here, or pardon me, my backdoor. So I will paste it on my terminal, uh, on my desktop, and I will double click it so it will run. Once it runs, I will wait for a few seconds and then I will actually try to run my server and see if it will connect back to us after we actually run it on target system. So, first of all, while we do that, let us delete the unnecessary directories, which is the dist, we do not need it anymore, the build and the reverse shell.spec, we can delete all of those. And right now, if we check out if everything is okay with the server, so we didn't change here anything, it listens on the correct IP address and on the correct port, and now if we try to run the server, we run it, it says listening for incoming connections, and we can see our target has connected, even after we running it on target PC. If we type here who am I, we can see we get the account, if we type here dear, we get all the files on our desktop. So, now we got a way that we can actually connect to our target whenever we want. If they run the backdoor, for example, uh, three hours ago and we run our listener three hours later, we will still be able to connect to the target system since they are constantly performing the connection function uh, from socket library every 20 seconds. Uh, so that would be about it for this video. What we will do in the next video is we will see how we can also make this program run even after the target reboots their system. So right now, for example, we can connect uh, at any point after the target runs the program, but if they shut down their PC and they restart it, the, the program will not be running anymore. So what we can do is if they reboot the PC, we will not be able to connect anymore to the target until they run the program once again. So we want to bypass that as well, and we will do that in the next video. So hope you enjoyed this one, and I hope I see you in the next one. Bye.